in political discourse, every term has two meanings. You've got to start by recognizing that. So democracy has an official meaning, which is something like, you know, the ability of the public to take part in running their own affairs or something. But it also has a technical meaning, the one that's actually used. Uh, something is a democracy if it's run by the business classes. If, if business runs it, especially business elements that are supportive of U.S. interests, then it's a democracy. If not, it's not a democracy. It doesn't matter. Nothing else matters virtually. Uh, you'll check, you'll notice that this criterion works quite perfectly for identifying democracy. Uh, same is true of the term peace process. It has a dictionary meaning. In the dictionary meaning, a peace process is some kind of process that's trying to lead towards peace. But it also has a technical meaning. Uh, the technical meaning, in its technical meaning, it refers to whatever the United States happens to be advocating at a particular moment. Uh, uh, whatever diplomatic initiatives the United States is advocating, that's the peace process. Uh, notice it follows that it's a logical impossibility for the United States to be opposed to the peace process. That's a nice consequence. Uh, you, to, to prove that the United States is for peace, you don't have to do any laborious inquiry into the annoying facts, because it's true by definition. Since the peace process is whatever the United States is up to, the United States is always supporting peace. And the U.S. enemies are always opposed to peace uh, because they're not supporting what the U.S. is up to, and by definition that means uh, 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 they're opposed to peace. Uh, you'll never find in the U.S. media, or for that matter in U.S. scholarship for the most part, any such phrase as the United States is opposing the peace process, or the United States is trying to block the peace process. You can't find such statements because they'd be logical contradictions. Actually, I made this statement in a talk in Seattle a couple of months ago, and there is a media analysis group in the graduate school there, and a couple of weeks later I got a letter from somebody saying he was kind of intrigued, so he did a data-based study of the New York Times over 10 years, and he found, I don't know, like 900 references to peace process and checked them all out, and in fact there's not one case where the United States was opposed to the peace process. It's pretty remarkable because that was a period when the United States was trying to undermine the, uh, di diplomatic negotiations and settlement in Central America and in the Middle East and so on. Notice that's pretty remarkable. It, even the most sublime state, uh, you'd expect that it wouldn't always be in favor of the police, p peace process, maybe just by error or misunderstanding. But in the case of the United States, it's hundred. I, I suspect it's a hundred percent. You might check and see if you can find any exception. And the reason is, it's just true by definition, since the peace process is whatever we do. Uh, now, there are two major examples of peace processes in process now. One of them's in the Middle East and one's in Central America. There's no time to go through the details, but if you look, you'll notice that in the Middle East, the United States has been trying to block a diplomatic settlement for the of the Arab-Israeli conflict for the past 20 years, and it's still trying to block it. And in this, it's virtually isolated in world opinion. That's exactly what's going on now. Uh, if you like, I'll give you some details. I have a detailed discussion of it in the current issue of Z Magazine, if you're interested. Uh, but I think it's quite clear. Nevertheless, the discussion is the United States is trying to advance the peace process. Uh, there's another peace process going on in Central America, which is no less interesting. Uh, I'll read you from the front page of the New York Times today. Uh, the lead story in the New York Times today, which I picked up on the airplane, says U.S. Envoy urges Hondurans to let the Contras stay. Okay, let them stay in Honduras. They're trying to kick them out. And then comes a long story, and you turn to the second page, the continuation page, and it says, on its face, the administration proposal to keep the Contras in place would seem to be inconsistent with the spirit of the regional peace agreement, which calls for their relocation. But administration officials say there's no inconsistency. Well, that's about as close as you can come, you know. On its face, it seems to be inconsistent with the spirit of the peace agreement. Well, the peace agreement is quite explicit. Uh, the 1987 peace agreement, which the United States has succeeded in undermining and destroying, says explicitly uh, that the one indispensable element in obtaining peace in the region is the end of any form of support, logistical, military, propagandistic, etc., for irregular forces like the Contras. Now, it's not, it doesn't seem to be inconsistent in, with the spirit, but it's flatly inconsistent with the words uh, to keep the Contras in place. Uh, well, the same is true of everything else about that. Uh, the 
there was a, uh, there's, uh, that was the 1987 peace agreement, which the United States tried to undermine and did undermine with the support of the media. Uh, but there are others. There's a, uh, the, right now there's a debate going on on so-called humanitarian aid to the Contras. Well, uh, the term humanitarian aid has a meaning. Uh, in fact, the World Court in its decision defines humanitarian aid. Uh, it, you look up paragraph 243 of the World Court decision, and it defines humanitarian aid as aid given for the hallowed purposes of the Red Cross, namely to relieve human suffering, uh, and crucially, it says, aid that is given without discrimination to civilians on all sides of any conflict. Only under such conditions does anything qualify as humanitarian aid. Well, that means all the stuff given is called humanitarian aid has nothing to do with humanitarian aid. It's military aid. But you'll never find this discussed in the media. I doubt if you can find one reference to this in the media. So now we're talking about humanitarian aid that's going to be voted, the Bush administration hopes, to keep the Contras in place in violation of the 1987 agreement. Well, there was also a Central American President's Agreement just last month, and that said something too. It said the Contras have to be relocated away from Honduras. So this is flatly inconsistent with that, not the spirit, but the wording. Uh, furthermore, uh, there was a ceasefire agreement between Nicaragua and the Contras last March over the deep objections of the United States last March 23rd, and that ceasefire agreement has some very specific terms in it. It says that aid can continue to go to the Contras in uh, ceasefire zones, all of which are in Nicaragua, when provided by a neutral agency. That's what the wording of the agreement says. Congress passed legislation right after that sent to send what they call humanitarian aid to the Contras, but if you look at the legislation, it says specifically that it must be in accord with the ceasefire agreement and it must be in accord with the Central American Peace Agreement. Well, that means that the only aid that Congress could legally send to the, to the Contras in accordance with its own legislation is aid given by a neutral agency, like the Red Cross, uh, to Contras in ceasefire zones inside Nicaragua. Uh, that's not just my interpretation. The ceasefire agreement also specified an international official in charge of monitoring the agreement. It's the Secretary General of the Organization of American States. He wrote a letter to, President, to Secretary of State George Shultz stating that the aid that the United States was sending was inconsistent with the ceasefire agreement and he was, wanted to call the attention of the Secretary of State to this serious violation of the ceasefire agreement and the congressional legislation. That was never reported. Uh, Congress proceeded to send the aid. Uh, the neutral agency that they selected was USAID, State Department subsidiary. That's the, US, that's the neutral agency. And they're sending it illegally to Honduras. In fact, the aid that they're sending is not only incon flatly inconsistent with the Central American Peace Agreement, it's even inconsistent with Congress's own legislation. That's pretty tricky. You'll never find one word of discussion about this. This is against the background of years of the United States trying to undermine every effort at political settlement of, that, of those conflicts, whether they were uh, through the Contadora group of Latin American democracies or the United Nations or the Security Council where the United States vetoed resolutions calling on all states to support international law and so on. And it continues. But nevertheless, according to the media, uh, the press, the United States government is supporting the peace process. Well, I'm suggesting that wherever you look, if you look closely, you'll find exactly the same thing. Uh, you'll find quite a remarkable degree of civility and subordination to established power uh, particularly remarkable because there's no force behind the, there's no authority that can impose force. This is willing subservience, not compelled subservience, uh, and the kind that in fact flows, I think, just from the, the logic of the institutions for the reasons that I mentioned. Well, let me return finally to a prediction of the propaganda model that I mentioned already, namely that however well confirmed it is, uh, it cannot be part of the discussion. It's going to, got to remain outside the spectrum of uh, debate in respectable circles, uh, maybe with some very marginal exceptions. Uh, the reasons are the ones I mentioned. They're pretty obvious. That conclusion, again, is quite well established empirically, and I think we may assume with fair degree of confidence that that will continue to be the case.